This is the 2023 Suzuki V-Strom 1050DE. It's got a 21 inch front wheel, longer travel suspension and a few extra modes. But what's it like out there in the real world? Okay, so let's get straight into the riding review and we'll start where I normally start with the engine. And there's not actually a lot that's changed from the previous model. In fact, engine wise, nothing has changed. It's the same 1037cc V twin motor that puts out 105 horsepower and has 100 Newton meters of torque. It is a beautiful engine, really smooth. You've got a nice V twin rumble, the delivery of power it's very linear around town really lovely smooth engine it's not aggressive and really peaky it's just very flexible it's a, obviously a nice smooth motor oh, it's an SMT relatively soft throttle it's just a really nice surge of power as opposed to kind of an aggressive punch mind you uh, it will get on if you need it to There you go, that lovely sound, really does sound good. So I think it's a, a superb touring engine. Quick shifter of standard, oh, let's make sure nobody's coming around there. Uh, quick shifter of standard on this bike, which again is really good, no issues with that at all. It's actually a nice slick gearbox, and there's nothing really I can find to complain about this engine. On open roads like this it's just lovely. On tick over it sounds like a sewing machine, just really nice and tight and you know not clattery or anything. It's a it's a lovely engine. Not much more I can say about that really to be honest. It does what it needs to do, it does it well. A very pleasurable engine. Now the suspension on this has obviously been jacked up to accommodate that 21 inch front wheel. Although interestingly, the, the ground clearance, I think it's 180 millimeters, and the suspension travel are lower than I was expecting. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about ergonomics, about the whole kind of feel and ride of the bike, but it's, it's it, the bike is taller, but it doesn't seem to have that much more suspension travel. As a road bike, the suspension is, is fine. It's predictable, nice and plush, it's really comfortable. Arguably though, I think uh, the 1050 standard bike, it, it would be a much better road bike. Not just because of the smaller front wheel, but also slightly less travel and the whole ergonomics of the bike. To, to get this bike kind of looking or being dirt ready, they've kind of changed the geometry a little bit. Obviously that taller front end and the taller bike overall. And I wouldn't say that the bike feels skittish, it's not, it's very solid and that, a lot of that comes down to the weight and we'll touch on that as well. It's good, it's a, it's a very competent bike, the suspension is adjustable, front and rear, you can play around with that to get a, a, the perfect setup for you. There's no surprises, it's just very nice. You can just roll it into corners, it tracks nicely. Changes the direction are quick. And you've got that grunt, it seems, in any gear to pull you through. So handling wise on the road, not too bad. And we'll talk about off-road later on. Suspension, adequate, plush, comfortable. Nothing more to say. Right, now we've got some slower traffic. Let's talk a little bit about ergonomics. Uh, because for me, there's something about this that, that doesn't quite gel. And normally you can tell, I mean, I'm fortunate, I jump obviously from bike to bike to bike to bike. And you can normally tell when you get on a bike that you kind of gel with it straight away. You feel comfortable, everything's in the right place. Um, the Africa Twin is very much like that for me. There's lots of bikes that are lighter, faster, whatever it may be. But when I get on that, it just fits me and it feels right. Uh, same with the, the 800DE, it was a little bit like that. The GSX 8S I absolutely love in the, in the Suzuki range. I sat on that and I was like, yeah, we are going to get on. The first time I rode this, when I picked it up from Suzuki and Milton Keynes, I wasn't that keen. There's something 
so it's not quite right about the hand bum feet triangle for me the bars are nice and wide high standing position is actually pretty good straight out of the box I wouldn't want to do anything with that necessarily maybe roll the bars up a little bit just to, to give them a little bit of a raise seat is broad and comfortable you know I did a few hours on this and no issues with that at all but the pegs I think for me are a little bit too high uh, I've got 32 inch inside leg and I'm, I am feeling like they, they, they do feel high in comparison to the seat and when you consider that that seat height as standard is 880 mil um, I, I just find that it just feels a bit weird I feel like a very odd position and I haven't really got used to it it's not um, not something that uh, I particularly enjoy put it that way and one of the other big issues about this bike for me is the weight this tips the scale at 252 kilos that's pretty chunky it is a big bike obviously we've got a big old v-twin motor in there now, now I've stopped I've got one foot on the peg I can get the other foot flat foot if I try to put two feet down I'm on my toes so the combination of 252 kilos and the bike being tall I think can make it intimidating off-road particularly for novices if you're a great off-road rider then yeah, you won't worry too much about that uh, there's an age-old question of, of how much big adventure bikes get taken off-road anyway it feels a bit like a standard V-Strom has been messing around in a dressing up box and, it, and it's gone for the bigger front wheel, it's gone for the, the taller ride, I mean it's a nice looking bike I would say that the standard 1050 is going to be probably a better choice for the majority of people looking at this bike I think if you want to go further off road this isn't the bike you're going to pick and if you do predominantly road riding the, the, the standard 1050 is a better package if you do predominantly road with some off-road which is what I am like I'll be honest I will probably still go for the standard bikes if you get a decent set of tires on that um, you're still going to be able to handle the, the, the gravel now I'm used to riding big bikes don't get me wrong I mean the Africa Twin Adventure Sport is a big bike but that feels more balanced than this at slow speed and slow maneuvering this is a proper lump uh, and it is quite tricky to, to manoeuvre around. It leans over quite a lot on the stand as well and just hoiking it off of that stand is a bit of an effort. Out riding like this is lovely, no problems at all. Uh, when you're moving it around or riding at very slow speeds as in walking pace or lower, uh, it just feels really cumbersome. Subsequently, it's been a bike that I have not pulled out of the garage that often since I've had it. Obviously I've done what I needed to do to ride it to get to know it and all of that sort of stuff But as it happens at the moment, I've been awash with press bikes I think everybody else is on holiday and I've struck jackpot But it meant I've had three and sometimes four press bikes at the same time to try to get through And if I'm going out to run an errand or you know, just going out for a bit of fun or, or just go for a ride I was leaving this one in the garage and I was picking something else more often than not I mean it's a really good bike to ride, it's super comfy, you could munch miles on it I wouldn't say it's particularly exciting I kind of feel like Suzuki have gone after that bigger adventure bike market by lobbing uh, you know, a, a bigger front wheel on here and jacking the suspension up and it kind of feels like the bike is paying homage to that off-road style without really delivering on it as I say, if you're going to go further off-road you're probably going to pick something else and if you're not going anywhere near off-road then the standard bike is a much better riding proposition okay so let's look at some of the other bits and pieces on the bike quickly um, the good thing I like about Suzuki's is whenever you pick a bike up from their press fleet it is a bike exactly as it would come from the showroom uh, a lot of other manufacturers lob packs on it and extras and bits and pieces like that so what I'm riding now is the bike for the price that you see on the screen. We have a quick shifter as standard. We've got that same TFT display that we've seen on the 800DE. I really like this. Everything you need to know is right there. 
we've got a few extra modes on there so I'll cut away to another video to show that so you can see that a little bit better you've got cruise control as standard on this but you've still got that same kind of rocker switch that we saw in the 800 DE up and down takes you through the, the bits and pieces down here your trip and all that sort of business but you've got the addition of as you can see the the markings for your cruise control and that cruise control button is over there so hit of that you get the little cruise control thingy on there and then you can just set it the screen is fine it actually works pretty well i don't really get much in the way of wind noise or buffeting from it it's non-adjustable a bit like the de well i say non-adjustable you can unbolt it and move it but you can't move it as you would do normally now the standard v-strom has got a little lever on the front so you have to get off the bike to do it but you can kind of release it and move it up and down they've taken that off of this bike it is just in that fixed position the little deflectors on the front kind of help the hand guards are good it's got a rack on the back which comes a standard which is nice to see and you've got fixings for luggage i've got my sw motec road pack on it at the moment and there's plenty of places to lash that down fit and finish is good i think it's a nice looking bike i'm not quite as keen on the yellow as i am on the blue and white one but overall it's a nice looking bike retains that dr big aesthetic it's just a very nicely done okay so let's find somewhere just to have a quick look around this bike <laughs> yeah on anything a little bit uneven that's a long lean for that standard just feels it but there you go you can see the rack that comes as standard here's the mounts I spoke about so easy to strap on but the luggage just snaps onto that big old chunky exhaust center stand on there as well bit of oddities going on the front anybody that knows the v-strom will know there's normally a lever to adjust that they've just gone with the bolted section that has been removed so that ability to slide it up and down unless i'm missing something i've not found a way to change that you do wonder why not just change the screen so all of this is covered wouldn't be that much to manufacture a new screen but yeah it is what it is but yeah nicely turned out bike so anyway as nice as it is here at Newmarket it's time to uh, go and find some off-road trials to give it a go okay so this has off-road capabilities i should ride it off-road um makes sense now i will put a caveat out that this is by no means a test of this bike's off-road capabilities this is a very simple trail but I do ride every adventure bike or scrambler that has some kind of off-road uh, leanings down here so it gives me a good opportunity to see how they compare. My reviews tend to be a bit of an everyman review, I'm no expert in any one kind of discipline if you like, so this is just you know framing this. So anyway, let's have a quick look, let's get the mode sorted out, so mode 3, 2, 1 off-road or gravel so we've got off-road or gravel i'm going to put it in gravel because that's essentially all we have here so i should yeah there's a bit of rear wheel slip there and uh certainly um put some power down yeah i look at this from a point of view as this is the kind of trail that they think these bikes are going to go on as i said earlier if you've got any off-road ambitions uh, to ride more technical stuff it's, it's, it's just not the bike that you would be picking i mean the standard mixed tour tires that are on here are okay for this sort of stuff if it was any wetter it would be an issue but they're they're fine for this and the suspension's nice and plush it's trumping through here i'm not getting too much in the way of kickback if you've seen my videos you know we've been through here before it's a good mix it's a hard pack but it's quite bumpy and actually straight away compared to some other bikes uh, you can kind of feel the bulk on this it's a little bit fidgety a little bit bouncy this is just it just uh, it's not i'm trying to think of the best way to describe it it just feels a bit harsh it does it feels like it needs a little bit of softer damping it might be that i just need to back these off a little bit so uh, i'll tell you what it is it's, it's the rebound needs slowing down it's rebounding back out of the the compression quite abruptly 
I think slowing the rebound down would help. But yeah, easy trail, but that's my off-road element done for the review. You know, it's it's okay. That's all I can say. Nothing's blown me away through there. Uh, the, the 800DE felt much plusher, much more manoeuvrable. That could be down to its size. If I look at a bike of a similar weight, the Africa Twins through there, and the Africa Twin suspension feels plusher and is, is a less of a, a jiggly ride. Put it that way. So, with all that said, who do I think this bike is for? Well, if you want a big adventure bike for that upright riding position and munching miles, this is great. As I've said, I think the standard bike, if you're 90%, 100% on road, is going to be a better proposition. But if you like that that kind of off-road aesthetic, which I do, I think this is a nicer looking bike than the standard bike, then it might be something for you to consider. I think the 800DE from Suzuki throws a spanner in the works because for me it feels almost as capable. I know we've got a smaller engine with less power but you don't really notice it that much I guess unless you're too up fully laden with luggage. Uh, I think the 800DE does most if not all of what this bike will do but I think it's nicer to ride, I think it's a little bit more comfortable, I think it's nicer to ride off road. If I was spending the money I'd definitely, from my perspective, put that money into the 800DE and I'm going to have a few thousand pounds left over to either buy my luggage or get myself kitted out with some really nice gear. And that's where I, I have a problem with this bike. It kind of doesn't really know what it wants to be. It's still very much got those road routes. It's paying homage to the off-road stuff, but I think there are better options out there. So unfortunately, Suzuki, uh, it's a no from me. Um, it's not a bike that I would pick. I, I, I can't say that I've not enjoyed riding it because I enjoy riding any bike that is, you know, pleasure in itself is just riding. But when you put this up against the competition, it's, it's kind of trying to plug a hole maybe in the Suzuki range where it, it didn't really need it. Anyway. If you've got any questions about the bike, let me know in the comment section down below. I've stopped doing it, but I'll ask for likes and subscribes because they do seem to matter. And so all that leaves me to say is until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!